You can hear me now, correct? Yeah, I can hear you. Awesome. What's the cool. other poster next to the pet sounds? Uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds Ghost Team. <laughs> happy, happy, uh, a happy, uh, a happy listen throughout. And I'm in my daughter's room. <laughs> oh, cool. Not that she's a fan of Ghost Team. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she kind of likes the Beach Boys. She likes the Beach Boys Love You record for whatever reason. I have no idea why. Hmm. It's a bizarre record. But uh, anyway, hi. How you doing? Hello. Hey, how you oh, doing? Good. Well, thanks for uh, <clears throat> agreeing to chat with me. And, you know, like I said, if this uh, turns out going down the toilet, you know, <laughs> do I don't know why it would. I, I don't know either. But um, I want to start off by saying that me and my wife have listened to the Plosives record, your new, your new uh, project, Bam, with those three other guys. We listened to that record, I would say, probably 50 or 60 times. We just kept playing it over and over and over. It's really good. Thank so, you, man. For that. Yeah, um, as you can imagine... Um, you know, when you've listened to music for a really long time and you hear something that gets you really excited and it makes you want to reach out to a bunch of people and go, man, you should check this out. You know, <laughs> um, you know, that that doesn't happen a whole lot. So. I'm very thankful that you like it. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm baffled that anyone would like any of the any of this stuff. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. To me. I'm not used to people whose art I like, liking what I do. So that's pretty cool. Well, I'm, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just as surprised when anybody says that to me, you know, because I'm like, I, I just feel like I've pulled the wool over somebody's eyes or whatever. It's like, really? Somebody, <laughs> somebody that I like likes what I do? That's, that's pretty cool. But the, the thing that's funny is like, it turns out that before I had really <laughs> investigated all this music that you've done over the years, it turns out that I had met you at least once, maybe twice in San Diego when I when I sold merchandise for the Melvin. Like you, you came up with uh, Mario. Yeah, yeah. And, I think the second time I, I met you, I was Mario was and I, there. And I remembered you, but I was like, I know I've talked to this guy before, but I had, you know, I didn't know. So hopefully I wasn't I wasn't a dick. I don't think I was. No, but, not at all. If okay. I mean I'm 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 really shy, so I don't I'm not one of those guys that goes out there and introduces myself to everyone and anything yeah, like that's, that. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of awkward, you know, <laughs> for sure. And then like, I, I had wanted to interview you for the podcast I used to do. Oh, really? When, so I had I had Facebooked you, I think, and then talked, but then I just it just never. I was on tour a lot back then. And then right. the podcast became this just a bigger production every single time. So I eventually stopped doing it just for it was one of the things I stopped doing at some point and then never started doing it again. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, when, when the whole COVID thing started, I was working on this book that came out a couple of years ago called Self and Punishment. And mm -hmm. I knew that I, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to really do anything. I mean, the whole COVID stuff was unfolding, and I, you know, nobody really knew what was going on. But I we was were reading that we were reading that book while we were recording the plosives record. Really? Yeah, I was. Well, I brought it and like left around the studio, so we just pick it up when we weren't tracking. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, that was fun. You know, it was fun to do that and talk to all those people. Um, and, and the whole reason behind starting you know, like a YouTube channel and interviewing people was like, well, I want to try to promote, you know, what I'm doing to whoever's interested, which, you know, which is always going to be a pretty small, small audience. So, you know, it's kind of there if people want it, but that just kind of led to me just wanting to talk to anybody I thought would be, you know, interesting to talk to. And I've kind of kept it going uh, just because of that, you know, but, um, you know, I, I don't know how long I'm going to do it or whatever. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, for right now, it's like, you know, it's cool. It gives me a chance. I don't get out of the house much. And, you know, so it, it, it kind of 
gives me an opportunity to reach out to people and say hi and kind of geek out and hopefully keep being inspired. So that's kind of the whole reason behind it. But um, yeah, I, I think it was probably after meeting you that my wife, now wife, she turned me on to like the heavy vegetable record Frisbee, which I knew nothing about. And I was just totally floored by the whole thing. You know, and then that just kind of led me to like investigating more of the stuff that you've done, um, particularly uh, the other heavy vegetable stuff, and then all the all the offshoots of um, all that stuff. And it's like, man, this guy has made a shitload of music, and and I haven't even gotten to to pin back yet. I still haven't really <laughs> heard any of that stuff, and I know about Goblin Con, and it's like, but then I heard. Or realize that you have like a huge family and like do you like do you like are you like a, um do you have a job or anything or <laughs> no i mean I, watching I, the kids it's my job okay so you're like a stay-at-home dad and then when you get a chance to not do that then you play and record and write music right yeah right <clears throat> um and and, and were you always from san diego no, i grew up in new jersey till like uh sixth grade and then i would go back and forth you know between parents every once in a while right and one of your parents lived in san diego yeah so um how old are you anyway if you don't mind me asking i'm 51 okay i'm 56 so uh -huh. are you oh, you look good man well so do you uh, <laughs> there's no there's no video on my end just in case you're wondering people <laughs> uh, that's okay well it'll, it'll just yeah that's fine um, <laughs> but like so you i lived i grew up in southern california and moved out to raleigh north carolina in 1986 and right when i moved out there the only thing i had not i ever knew about san diego um when i was like a, a punk rock letter writing primitive doodler was that San Diego was a really weird, violent place, and that Battalion of Saints were from there, who I like. <laughs> and then when I moved away, all of a sudden, I, it seemed like there was this whole new world that started. Um, and I, I knew about John's band Pitchfork. And then I, that eventually led to Drive Like Jehu. And then it just seemed like the floodgates kind of opened up. There was all this shit. Oh, and Antioch Arrow. I knew Antioch Arrow. <laughs> I liked Antioch Girl a lot. And, yeah, uh, they were but, a gem in a pile of not gems. They have a lot to answer for, though, because they were like the, from what I remember, they were like their look, the gems and masochism look. You know, not like, my, not my, not my favorite record of theirs. For I like the record before that, the one that sounds like the void was really tight and arty. <laughs> yeah, the first two like, records are great. And right. then and the, then gems and Mac, Mac, whatever you call it, did not my, not for me personally. I liked it, but I could understand not liking it. But they really have a lot to answer for those guys because they're the ones that pioneered that whole fucking like. We're really skinny. We we we're, we're we're gonna wear black lipstick. We have a bullet belt and all that stuff. <laughs> I only realized that till later, but um, but that was all I really knew. I knew about that stuff. Um, were you playing in bands all along during that time? Because like, and was heavy um, was heavy vegetable the first sort of? I that was my first it. band at all. Really? Yeah. And you found these other, <clears throat> well, your your singer, and then the two other guys. Like, what were you? That stuff is crazy music. And there's like, um, there's some stuff that was going on out here on the East Coast that when I finally heard Heavy Vegetable, sort of reminded me of of some of what you were doing, but you guys were way better at it than, <laughs> than uh, you know, there was some stuff in Richmond, like whatever Penn Rollins did. Um, there was a few bands in North Carolina, a band called Erectus Monotone that had that sort of quirky, hard to define, I don't want to label anything. I don't want to say mathy or whatever, but it's we were right way into breadwinner. You guys were really into okay, yeah. <laughs> did you guys did you know about Butter Glove? His band between honor. I knew about Butter Glove, but it was really hard to find it. 
back then? They were like the best band on the East Coast in their brief time as a band. They were really good. I even had the the Lady Fingers uh, demo. Demo, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I first moved out here, it was all about honorable, pretty much. I mean, like uh -huh. DOC, we of course. But like, by the <clears> time it came out here, they started to change. I guess mm. I think they just kind of got burned out because they worked really hard. And they wrote a whole set. I don't know if you were a fan of CUC, but it was like CUC and Honor Roll, and I saw those bands constantly. And then yeah, there was, was another called Confessor, who I'm yeah. sure you know, about, uh -huh. and I saw them like 30 times or whatever. So in some weird way, I think Heavy Vegetable and some of the things that you you did <laughs> sort of remind me of like Richmond, Virginia, Confessor, some <laughs> some of that stuff. Dude, I would, I'd be, I mean, that's, that's what I, that's kind of like the stuff that I wanted to be associated with, but thought I was like, nope, nobody's going to get that from this. Like, it's right. like animosity was a big deal for me. Oh yeah. It's still a great record. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah. So what was heavy veg? How long did, was heavy vegetable band? Um, it was hard to say. I don't, really remember we were probably around a year or so before we recorded the first record right we were around long enough to um have an entire set of songs that we realized were terrible and got rid of <laughs> right of slowly but yeah it was the first time i ever wrote songs and just one day like i was like oh wait, i get it you write like this in it yeah 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 and, and and you strike you strike me as somebody that obviously has listened to a whole lot of music and a whole big spread wide variety of music too is that is that, that is fair? true yeah yeah I, I i don't understand how people can just listen to one thing even then you know it's kind of like it just always um that part always boggled my mind so that was the other thing i thought about heavy vegetable was like there was like so many ideas and so much going on, but it all seemed like it was coming from just one place. And that place just seemed like a bunch of people that liked a huge variety of music. Where Did you guys have like a pretty decent, um, were people into heavy vegetable? Um, there, well, it was one, it was like a weirdo band. So wherever you would go, there wouldn't be very many people, but there'd always be like a handful of weirdos. Yeah, and those are the I, people I'd wanted to be talking to anyway. The, you know, I don't really know that much about. Do you always have like two or three bands going at the same time, depending on your schedule? Or do you uh, just... Yeah, I mean, it's always I mean, I'm always writing for whatever I feel like writing at the time. Like sometimes there'll be a schedule very rarely. And they're like, you need to finish writing for this record before you go to the studio. But since I, I'm my studio is usually just my office because nobody can afford a studio hardly ever anytime. Sure. You know, then it's like I just get done whatever I get done and dole it out to whoever wants to deal with it. Right. You know? <clears throat> Was Pinback sort of like your main band for a long time? And and I'm I'm speaking clearly from total ignorance here because I know <laughs> that I know Pinback had a good amount of re recordings out and. You know, I um, I knew about Pinback, but I still haven't really investigated it. Was that sort of your main thing for a while? Yeah, I mean, it was the thing that everybody liked, I guess. It was a thing. I, it was the first time I ever got paid for anything. <laughs> right. That's always a good and, feeling. And yeah, it's still pretty much that way. But <laughs> um, right. yeah, so because it actually like for a while there was making a living from it without but still not you know i i it's so i hate to use the word selling out but i mean the, the phrase selling out but we never did but still we i don't know it, it, we did pretty well for a while there and then yeah. touch and go went under or he stopped doing it and then yeah. everything kind of crumbled. A lot of bad stuff happened to me in that one month period. Yeah. <clears throat> but, how many, uh, that was about what? 
And now it can touch and go forward as long as that. That was quite a while ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. And I <clears throat> have not been a thousandaire since. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. And you get paid a little bit of money for doing stuff that you would do anyway. And you're like, maybe I can keep making this last. And like, you're trying to figure out how to make it last. And that's very, that's a very difficult thing to do to this yeah. very day, especially now. Yeah. Well, um, it, always, it always was difficult. <laughs> uh, yeah, but even when pinback was a main concern, I would still be doing lots of other stuff at the same time, and would get to take a month to six months, uh, six weeks off to try to tour other things. That, yeah. You know, I yeah, you play P, pinback would play pretty good venues and always did real well, and then I would go there a couple months later with the thing that i was really excited about to play to like a few people, people which is great like a few people were here awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah sure of course i mean it's like wow somebody you know sometimes <laughs> you know just having anybody oh 20 people care about what i'm doing yeah uh, i can't i can't take that for granted no matter what <laughs> and I, you know um Shit. something i just thought of in the course i fucking forgot what it was oh it was the cardiacs connection oh yeah so can you explain <clears throat> what your connection is to the cardiacs and how you got to know some of those people because i think you ended up going over to england and playing there and, yeah. yeah um all right i'm gonna tell and here is a part where I'm going to tell you a few things and then I'm going to say that this is between you and me. Okay. So the following is, okay. So the following is for, and you'll understand why, and it's not anything bad really. Right. Well, um, let's see. Uh, I guess Cavus. Yes. Uh, was started. I don't, I, I guess. Tim was into my stuff and Cavus was into my stuff and a, a few of those people, Tim Smith of the Cardiacs. Um, yes. But I was unaware of the Cardiacs and I know about a lot of stuff and the fact that I didn't know about the Cardiacs was insane to me. Like somebody tweeted me a video of the video for, uh, for Rez and then I was like 30 seconds in, I was like, this is something I love. This this is this is it this has got everything i like in it right and um let's see um so i started just talking about that like discovering that and then people were like you know that guy's a big fan of yours i'm like get out of here <laughs> <laughs> no he's, you must be mistaken yeah and um but um, do people that, I mean, should I explain what Tim's deal is, was? You mean as far as what happened to him or yeah. before, like, is it, um, I, you know, I, I think for anybody that, that actually would know who the cardiacs are, I, I'm, I was a late comer. You know, it was like only a couple of years ago where I had the same sort of reaction, like what the fuck is this? And it was the, uh, the, the one the double record that really kind of sucked me in sing to um, god yes that and then the live stuff afterwards yeah like, that's that just insane yeah um but i think i think anybody that knows about the cardiacs there's like this very weird group of people that are super into them to the point of how that usually goes when people are just a little too excited about something and they form <laughs> a baby group I mean that in the best way possible. So I, I would yeah. say that if you talk about Tim Smith, anybody who has any familiarity with him knows that <clears throat> he had a accident and sadly had to live with that for a long time and recently passed away. So I, I, don't, I don't think it's going to be a, a big deal one way or another. <laughs> well, Tim's, yeah. So how do I explain more? So Tim's deal was, other than that, well, he was the main songwriter, producer, everything for Cardiacs. Um, yeah. I'll just explain a little bit for the story for sure. whatever reason. Um, then he had some 
troubles around 2013, I think. Um, or is it 2007? When was it? Gee whiz. It was a little bit after Guns came out. Yeah. And um, and his, uh, he, let's see. And he got a, like, he had a weird kind of, you know, cardiac arrest thing actually happened. And he had yeah. his, his scar on his brain. And he yeah. was in the hospital, eventually got picked up and put in the hospital. And the, and he was fine for a while. And then, you know, he was communicating and everything. And but then the scar started to, you know, heal up or whatever. And it's and, and raise itself. And it started this thing in his brain. So he was under constant, like, imagine being just shocked by like, with your finger in a socket, your brain having its finger in its socket continuously. Yeah. Um, all the time, like, yeah. And it ma made him cringe up and could b barely move. He couldn't walk. He's in a wheelchair. The only way he could communicate was with a pillow. And this pillow would have not even words on it. Like they tried all sorts of things. They tried that Hawkins thing. Not he, he just wasn't cool with it. Because yeah. he was he he was a very stubborn fellow. And so this pillow, just just letters for the most part. Some there yeah. would maybe a thing called like pick me up or get me down or <clears throat> but he would spell out every word that he wanted to communicate, and somebody had to be there. S T A Y stay the you know and yeah. He would, but he was not short. He would, every sentence was a huge long sentence and would usually end up just being an excuse to fuck with you. <laughs> I right. feel like, blah, 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 you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> or something. He, he had a great sense of humor, even though he could not communicate at all. Yeah. Um, and, but so the fact that he, Wrote, I wrote him a Facebook message saying, basically starting off saying, I'm sorry, I have failed. You have been around this entire time and I had no idea. And it is the most, is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. And what you've done is amazing. And at least now that I know about it, I'll be a much better person in general for, for knowing about it. Because it's impossible to get their records over here still, you know. Even yeah. and now they're not on Spotify anymore for whatever reason. That's cool, but and but he wrote me back a huge message, and then later realizing that how much time that must have taken. Not that he had much else to do. Right, right, right. Was still with the effort of the sitting there and don't be doing that. So every year they would have a benefit for his hospital bills, and. Uh, this one year they they asked me to come along and, and headline this thing so i had been touring with uh what i called rob close grows gloomy place which you know mm -hmm. had a bunch of my friends playing the instruments and we had a good time and we tour put out a record that i liked actually and <clears throat> they asked me to come out there and play with a bunch of their guys and then be like gloomy clay gloomy place uk so my backup band <laughs> was all dudes from gong and scritty politi and and what and nsro and it was it was insane to me like and they would <laughs> and they like learned my songs before i got there and i can't tell it takes me forever to explain what i'm doing in general and it would be from veg songs all the way up to what i was doing then you know right. stuff i hadn't played in years some stuff i never played before like uh -huh. other men and um, it was it was nuts. And it was and we did a little tour over there and it was great to meet these people and have these new friends. And and I got involved in just this cult, this the, this group of people that were so energetic and amazing. And like I felt like, I, oh, I had a great new lease on life just being around these people. And it was so wonderful. And the show went well. And we our first show that we did was in Tim's living room. <laughs> just for Weird. him like it was i was so fucking nervous <laughs> it's right. it was nuts 
and then we played the then we did a little tour we played a little the 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 big show benefit for him with a bunch of rad bands yeah and i had so much fun just being around these people um but that's how that happened you know what else is kind of funny about when i got into the cardiacs is like for whatever reason and this turned out to be totally not true at all but i had this strange idea that somehow they were affiliated with some and some of the anarchist punk stuff in england like specifically <clears throat> rudimentary peni and crass for whatever reason some of what the cardiacs did reminded me even though they don't sound like either band there was the spirit of like uh, and, and yeah. i think i I just kind of wondered, do these guys have anything to do with crass and rudimentary people? I mean, not, and it turned out, no, they had nothing to do with any yeah. of that stuff. But I but asked I, Kavis about that, actually, when I was over there the first time. Like, oh, yeah. did we get to see rudimentary peni? <laughs> let me um, ask you a couple more questions, and I'll let you go. Um, I want to ask about plosives, because cool. it's like I said, um, I think Kristen heard the first couple songs that you guys sort of let everybody hear and right away i was like oh yeah this is going to be really good you know I, <laughs> I i can tell right away and and um you know we listened to that record when we literally stayed up and waited for for the day that the record was going to come out because we knew it would be on youtube so we could listen to it <laughs> and we at fucking midnight we were like man this, this whole thing is great and we listened to that fucking record like 50 times we just kept listening to it over and over. And it's like, I don't know what you guys were going for. And I know it was like a pandemic sort of a, um, inspired project. Slash well, not game. really. Not really. <laughs> I think that's just, just somehow been con construed as a talking point, but not really. I mean, it's something I've always wanted to do since, you know, forever. Yeah. But <clears throat> never thought I, I, I mean... I'm just think before the pandemic hit, we were writing songs and stuff. Right. Is the story about you and John dropping your kids off at the respective same <laughs> school? Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. We we like, we see each other every day. There, there was a school where there was a lot, weirdly a lot of the San Diego uh, <clears throat> rockers or whatever. Post, post, post hardcore scene yeah would would meet and just be like hey hey see see you yeah but it's always so emotional dropping your kids off and picking them up and whatever like, hey how's it going All right yeah this is my first priority <laughs> we'll talk later um yeah but now a lot of those kids are out of there <laughs> right right so so you just ask john what maybe we should do something okay and that's kind of how i always want to do that but i don't want to be that guy like yeah we should we should jam we should play guitars <laughs> <clears throat> well, i mean but there I was mean, a mutual there was obviously a mutual respect thing it wasn't I guess. Like, <laughs> I, I was, well, I'm, obviously it must have been there must have I been mean, some of that. I mean, it, it I, can, I still can't. I honestly can't picture John purposely listening to any of my records. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on! You got <laughs> you got a huge spread going on, Rob. I mean, you got you're doing everything from fucking oh, I don't know, pin back to thingy to heavy vegetable to that acoustics record where you <laughs> actually fucking pull off a cover of Surfs Up. <laughs> and, do a, and do an amazing version of Astro Zombies by the oh, come on, and there's that Melvin's cover and the rudimentary people. Who else is going to do that? That's worthy of respect in my in my book as a music fan. That's worthy of respect. So, Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. I'll I'll send you the money later. <laughs> <laughs> but, but but like anyway, go the ahead, reason the yeah, but the real the reason it got like the excuse was that the principal of the school who I previously produced his album um, <laughs> um, was like, we'd always have a uh, yearly, um, what do you call them? Uh, things to make money for the school. So this year he was all like, oh, we're just, can you get together something? Maybe you and John and 
some other people to like perform maybe just do some do some things like all right i got an idea maybe because i don't want to stress anybody out i'll i made a huge list of like hardcore covers that we could <laughs> okay let, 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 let's hear a few a few of the uh ideas here i'm just curious oh god i don't even remember like maybe really? Like, like, like really red and really red oh my god crucifix <laughs> uh not crucifix it wasn't really right, that, I honestly yeah. don't remember what was all on there, but it was like, I'll try to make this easy. <laughs> right. And uh, let's see. And so I found four guys that were willing to do it and could do it. And um, and John was like, like, this is fun and all, but I've kind of always wanted to write with you. So yeah. do you want to just make up something I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes please sir and it would kind of make close because he was busy with other stuff till like two weeks before this benefit and <clears throat> see so it just had like i whipped up a few songs and then we practiced a bit and did it with like a different drummer a different bass player yeah and some of those songs made it to what we are now yeah but it was yeah that's how it started started and then he was like okay what's i'm like can we please do this for real <laughs> <laughs> and i still like every step of the way like i can't believe i got away with it it's really happening <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a joyous recording too i mean it's but it's weird because like um i'm not sure what the wipers mean to you i think i can tell what i was I listening to them this morning dropping off the kids awesome well i love the wipers love and them. like there's this something about it about them and him greg sage that it seems really ordinary on the surface it's, it's kind of hard to explain the wipers to people that don't already know and worship the wipers <laughs> you know um but there's like this weird combination and plosives of I thought sunny pop hooks, Southern California drenched kind of courtesy of some of what you do and your, your voice. And then, um, you know, the wipers have this sort of oppressive, depressing wall of urgency. So it's almost like, you know, I mean, obviously John must like the wipers a lot. Too. Yeah, it's pretty can, obvious. It's pretty obvious, like you, you hear uh, <laughs> You hear like um, some of the hot snake stuff, and it's like I don't think I've heard anybody really deliberately try to really go after that sense of wipers urgency the way he did, mm -hmm. you know. So this is kind of a continuation of that. So it's this weird combination of sunny, like the clouds are parting and everything's going to be great. Everything's happy. <laughs> if, you don't learn, if you don't read the lyrics, yeah. If you don't read the lyrics, but then there's like there's this oppressive wall of depression behind it, and then somehow yeah. it works, and it's really catchy too. So it's like, thank you. Yeah. So my um, original idea was to be like motoric, uh, noy, drums, but as fast as possible, with, with with like wipers style chords behind it. I wanted to be the fastest thing but doing those kinds of things. You know, it's also kind of funny, like I, I immediately started reading about what people said about plosives records because I'm a, I'm a geek and I can't help it. And it's like, I don't, it's weird. It's like, I don't think people even really, I'm, you know, like some people got the wipers thing, but it's like to this very day, it seems like the wipers are still this kind of secret somehow. <laughs> Because like people just didn't pick up on it, you know. It's you know, it's not like you know, when I say that, I'm not saying that you guys sound just like the Wipers or when John plays guitar. I understand. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, but you know what I mean. And it's like, and people just like, how can you not know about one of the greatest bands that ever walked the earth? Yeah. As far as like you know, a a, a good thing to be influenced by. Um, our, our sound definitely would not exist if it wasn't for Greg, Greg Sage. Yeah. 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 Um, and then, and the reaction seems like it's been really good. I know you guys did a little bit of touring and stuff, and it seemed like the word got out pretty quickly that this was good and that 
you should check this out and hear the record. Did it go? I, uh, I, I never wanted that tour to end. I'm telling you, like, ah, uh, I could be doing that every day and be so stoked. <laughs> yeah, it seemed like people really, really, uh, what's the word? Picked up on it in a really quick way, almost like the way when we were kids and you'd hear about something that was really good before the internet before computers that sort of word of mouth thing like hey you know like if you you should check this out this is really good i think you like it but that, the way john runs his record label it's kind of is like that it's kind yeah. of cool is there anything going on in the future that you can talk about or is that well we we tracked several newer plosive songs we have four of our we have there were, and there were songs that we left off the first album just because john wanted it to be like 10 songs and there's some like some of our best stuff yeah is is not on that record because not because and for the only reason is because it would have been they're all sore thumbs sort of so the next record will be kind of a chair is missing to the first one's pink flag awesome <laughs> <laughs> a progression a strange progression a strange progression hopefully <laughs> yeah and then i always worry is stuff not fast enough i gotta stop well, with that i think i heard one song and it reminded me of and i'm not just saying this because we talked about it it reminded me of like an honor roll song from rictus sort of thing there is one new one that is very honor roll <laughs> 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 well that's another band that nobody knows anything about yeah rick used to i, I used to be roommates with rick froberg and he, he'd play that all the time i guess i guess i can't think of anything else to really uh <laughs> bring up. but i really appreciate you uh taking time out of your busy day oh. five children that's man well there's only two of them home right now <laughs> yeah and my yeah. wife's home from work Right, right.